Hello, everybody. I am Dr. Pranam Bhattacharya. I am Associate Professor of Cardiology at Guwahati Medical College Hospital uh, in uh, Assam. So today I will be talking to you uh, about angioplasty. So basically, what is angioplasty? So it, it, it is a procedure which is uh, done to open up uh, blockages in the heart arteries. That is the blockages which occur in the uh, coronary arteries. The process by which uh, those are opened up is called as sim in simple terms to be angioplasty. So when is an angioplasty procedure performed? So uh, it is very important to realize that because of blockage in the arteries, the manifestations can be very different. Uh, it may be chronic stable angina, it may be acute coronary syndrome. Acute coronary syndrome will include uh, unstable angina or non-ST elevation myocardial infarction or ST elevation myocardial infarction. So depending on the type of the presentation and uh, what problem you are facing, uh, it may uh, require this procedure to be performed on a particular patient. So coming uh, one by one to each of the procedures, uh, what is chronic stable angina? Chronic stable angina is uh, when you have chest pain, chest pain on exertion or on uh, going upstairs, doing heavy work, uh, running, playing or during exertion basically. So when you have chest pain and uh, then you do need to consult your doctor uh, as early as possible and then after doing uh, all the required tests that is the basic tests like the electrocardiogram then the echocardiogram and possibly a treadmill test apart from the important uh, biochemical tests those are the blood tests which uh, you need to do uh, for example to know whether you're diabetic then what is the status of your lipid profile? That is, do you have uh, dyslipidemia? Or do you have any renal uh, dysfunction, any liver dysfunction? So the routine test has to be done along with the uh, ECG, the echocardiogram, and maybe a TMT uh, after your uh, physician advises to undergo a treadmill test. So suppose after all these uh, basic tests being performed and uh, they suspect that or the uh, treadmill test is positive, strongly positive, then, and you are very symptomatic. Uh, so uh, you may be subjected to a procedure called coronary angiography. So this is a test by which uh, we can detect the blockage in the arteries uh, of the heart. So if, uh, if there is a blockage, then the question comes where the block blockage is, whether it is a critical blockage, how many arteries are blocked so uh, depending on a lot of anatomical features of your coronary artery uh, will decide what procedure you will undergo after your angiogram and suppose you undergo it, it is a block there is a blockage which is suitable for uh, angioplasty procedure so your cardiologist will advise you accordingly and uh, you may need to undergo. So in this procedure, uh, in this condition, that is in the chronic stable angina, that means when only on uh, exertion you are having pain and um, so basically in this condition, uh, what happens is undergoing a angioplasty procedure uh, will just decrease your symptoms and it will not affect your uh, it doesn't have this procedure may not have uh, mortality benefit in the long term so in uh, cases of chronic stable angina uh, medical management with medicines if you can continue with the optimal medicines and the optimal doses as advised by your doctor sometimes it is uh, as effective as undergoing a coronary angioplasty and uh, if you, uh, despite medication, you are having recurrent symptoms of chest pain and angina, you may need to undergo angioplasty procedure. And this will definitely improve your symptoms. You will, uh, uh, 
your frequency of your chest pain and all other similar problems will definitely come down after the procedure. Although maybe in the long term, the medical med uh, management as well as the angioplasty procedure may be um, quite similar in chronic civil impairment. Now coming to the other uh, types of uh, presentations uh, due to blockage in the heart arteries. So as I already said, uh, chronic stable angina is one, then the uh, acute coronary syndrome. That means when you suddenly have chest pain and you uh, go to your doctor uh, to seek uh, medical attention and uh, it may be uh, either unstable angina or non-ST elevation MI or ST elevation MI, as I already said. So basically what your doctor will do is, uh, first thing is an ECG which has to be done. And uh, blood tests for uh, troponin and uh, CKMB. So these, these uh, tests are urgently will be sent. And um, if your ECG shows certain changes and your blood test is also positive, then uh, that will uh, you will be labeled by your uh, consulting physician or cardiologist as either uh, non-ST elevation MI or ST elevation MI or unstable angina. So risk stratification in such patients is very important. That means uh, suppose a patient um, presents with acute severe chest pain and it is very important to risk stratify that what is his risk because uh, higher the risk at presentation. That means if you're having ongoing chest pain, your blood tests are positive, your ECG shows very significant changes, you may be having heart failure. So in cases of uh, very high risk, we have many scoring systems based on uh, which we do tend to uh, risk stratify the patients. So that uh, will tell us how early uh, to advise for an angiography. So angiography will basically again uh, mark out the anatomy of the particular patient and whether it needs any urgent revascularization or angioplasty procedure. So uh, if the patient is moderate to high risk, then always it is better to adopt an early invasive strategy. That is, go for an angiogram and uh, accordingly uh, proceed for revascularization procedure which can be either an angioplasty or a, uh, maybe as per advice might require a bypass surgery at a, a later date. So the angioplasty procedure is basically, uh, uh, it is a procedure as I, had already, I have already told you that uh, it is a procedure by which the blockage in the arteries opened up uh, using certain techniques. So uh, basically it can be done by two ways, uh, either through your hand, uh, which we usually uh, do, uh, or it can be done through the uh, groin. So there are two ways by which we can uh, have access to the arterial system. So that, and then after having access to the arterial system, either through the hand or through the groin, uh, a, a long uh, sheet or a tube uh, is inserted through the artery to the uh, opening of the coronary arteries. And then uh, uh, a dye or contrast agent is injected so that we can visualize the uh, exact location of the block. And then uh, once we have decided that that particular blockage needs to be opened up, then through the catheter, a wire is guided through the uh, blocked portion of the artery and then over that a balloon is threaded over it and then uh, with dilatation at the particular point of narrowing uh, subsequently uh, again another uh, wire mesh which is called the stent uh, is deployed uh, across the lesion uh, to keep it open. So this is basically in a very simple term a procedure of angioplasty which is performed for blockages in the uh, heart arteries. So uh, this procedure, if it is done in cases of acute heart attack, in acute ST elevation heart attack, uh, within the uh, appropriate time, it is it has the maximum mortality benefit. That means if uh, angioplasty is performed, which is called as primary angioplasty, instead of using 
uh, clot uh, breaking medicines uh, if a patient is taken up for a primary angioplasty and it can be successfully perf performed and uh, blood flow re-established then in those patients maximum benefit can be derived in terms of mortality benefit so primary angioplasty is definitely a very uh, important and uh, useful uh, treatment modality in patients with uh, heart attack so uh, what are your uh, worries uh, i mean if somebody has to undergo an angioplasty procedure uh, what uh, precautions need to be taken after the procedure uh, so uh, let me basically tell you uh, about it so people uh, are worried as uh, as to how early they can uh, go back to work so if a procedure is done uh, through the hand and you can be discharged the next day and maybe if you did not have acute coronary syndrome you are fit to start your work maybe within a week or so and uh, and but the most important thing is uh, compliance with the medication the medicines which your cardiologist will prescribe you after angioplasty procedure and continuation of the uh, medicines at the appropriate dose is very important to prevent uh, stent related complications so that is one thing so amongst the most commonly uh, prescribed medicines uh, would be your blood thinners in simple terms these are called blood thinners or antiplatelet medications which will include one of the aspirins or plus a newer uh, one of the newer agents so uh, so that is one apart from that you need to continue your statin medication either atrovastatin or uh, rosuvastatin as prescribed by your uh, treating cardiologist and apart from these medications uh, there are certain other medications like beta blockers and or ACE inhibitors which uh, are usually prescribed and you it is very important that you uh, continue regularly with the medic medicines which have been prescribed uh, by your treating physician next is uh, you should your lifestyle modification is very important for lifestyle modification uh, first of all uh, if you are a hypertensive you need to control your BP uh, very well so there, there are a lot of guidelines uh, which do uh, specify a certain blood uh, uh, pressure level but uh, to be on the safer side uh, if you have suffered from a heart attack or you have undergone an angioplasty procedure uh, I think you should have a target of at least 138 uh, blood pressure uh, to be on the safer side if you're a diabetic you should have adequate control of your blood sugar levels in consultation with your diabetologist or your endocrinologist and then you need to uh, maintain a healthy uh, your lipid profile you should pay attention to your lipid profile so if you are a dyslipidemic uh, you need to uh, apart from your statin medications which will routinely be prescribed after angioplasty procedure uh, you need to uh, do a physical activity so physical by physical activity I mean that uh, at least 20 minutes to 45 minutes of brisk walking I think that is quite good enough uh, for to maintain a healthy heart uh, and apart from that uh, weight reduction is also advisable and uh, a diet so next thing is you should have a balanced healthy diet and uh, along with the diet you should try and have a healthy mix of the cooking oil medium which we uh, in our Indian diets we do use uh, oils uh, quite a lot so we do need to have the uh, basically the healthy oils and uh, we should not continue with a particular oil uh, always what we can do is for a certain period we can use one oil and then maybe switch over to another healthy oil so just to name a few maybe olive oil uh, is quite healthy and even mustard oil is not bad although in, in these parts of the country uh, it has been seen that uh, mustard oil uh, use leads to certain problems like conduction defects of the heart so these are 
and but that is a, a hypothetical theory although uh, uh, there is a possibility about it but uh, apart from that uh, master doyle does have its benefits uh, because of its uh, content of uh, vitamins and antioxidants so uh, cooking medium uh, should be paid uh, adequate attention and uh, um, basically so to sum up uh, uh, today's uh, message is that uh, angioplasty procedure uh, is a very useful procedure for a certain subset of patients especially the moderate to high risk patients with <clears throat> who's uh, on risk stratification by the doctor if they fall under the moderate or high risk category definitely angiogram would be advised and accordingly further treatment would be advised so uh, after the angioplasty procedure you need to pay attention to your lifestyle modification as well as control of your risk factors so risk factors as i've already said are uh, hypertension diabetes dyslipidemia then uh, overweight and so all these risk factors uh, you need and the most important thing is if you're a smoker or you use tobacco in any form i think that has to be stopped completely because uh, a lot of patients come and ask and say doctor so i just smoke once or twice a day i mean one or two is almost equivalent to 10 to 20 cigarettes a day so Smoking is definitely, uh, it should be stopped. And if somebody does take alcohol, then a moderation in alcohol intake is definitely advisable. Although if somebody does not uh, take alcohol, it is not advisable for them to start taking uh, alcohol. So thank you very much for the time. In video. In, in. <laughs>